Welcome, everyone, to another edition of In the Divide, where we're bringing all things crypto together with Algorand. This is Sam Houston. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you're psyched. Hope your bags are full. Um, this is another episode where I hopefully I give you some wise information, needed information to keep you solid in your bags and your hope so you can look towards the future if you're investing right. Understand this is not financial advice. This is just entertainment and education, mostly education, hopefully to get your mind right and keep your mind focused on what you're in the crypto for. And that's to improve your, your portfolio and your bags, okay? So if you're stopping by for the first time, please hit the subscribe button. You know what you do. Hit the comment in the comment selection section. And uh, most of all, if there's something that's pertinent that you like, hit the like button. Hit the dislike button. Just let me know you're here. All right. So today, what I need you to do is I have a couple of things. First, there is um, some of the video I want you to see. Stacy Warden is out there again, repping uh, the Algo brand and repping it good. Um, I want you to pay attention to some of the things she's about to say. I think it's pertinent because a lot of people in the Algorand who've been here for a while, you know, everything that you see is that Algorand is not really pumping like other coins. I have some of my theories and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't want to necessarily just be a hopium guy because I may see it differently and I may be wrong, but this here, I want you to hear. Give some. I think we need that. Right. I, it's interesting. I think there was a sentiment always in crypto that was sort of anti-establishment, of course. And now as we mature and we're on the certainly on the uh, on the block for regulators and things like that, it feels like we need some guys in nice suits who can speak the language on both sides. Yeah. But, you know, also there's so many real world problems to solve. Right. You know, our North Star is financial inclusion. You know, there's 1.7 billion people in this world without access to financial at financial services of any kind. You know, when I grew up, I grew up in TradFi, right? I have had, you know, eight years at JP Morgan, three years at the NASDAQ, U.S. Treasury Department. Like, I have been there in a traditional financial world. And I remember we were so excited when we went from T plus three to T plus two. You know, like, we took a day off of it, right? And like, that. Ah, in crypto, you know, in Algorand, we sell in 4.5 seconds, right? And if you're going to get to those 1.7 billion people in the world, you, the only way to do that is in a crypto blockchain environment. You know, the way I look at innovation in finance for the last 15 years is bank balance sheets. The messaging between two bank balance sheets just got faster and faster. And just blockchain is different. It's writing to one ledger. I mean, you know this, obviously, but that is revolutionary. And so, you know, you think about those real world problems, Algorand can solve those because, you know, they're just the scale is possible. The environmental footprint is low and the fees are some penny, right? So you just talked about all the so with that, I want you to understand what's going on here. I, if you follow my channel, if you follow what I do, you understand I have been giving people the breadcrumbs on one of the bases of what Algorand is moving towards. Everyone looks at, you know, wallets, they look at certain metric developers and all that other stuff. There is a lot of different ways that Algorand is trying to play this. This is why they're called the adult in the room. This is why they are not necessarily trending like some of the other uh, uh, coins and um, uh, mooning and stuff like that, because people look at the metrics that other people are going off of. But what Algorand is doing what Algorand has done is they actually are moving into places and structures in infrastructure. This is what you have to understand. The infrastructure of company, co countries, the infrastructure of how the finance is done. They've done it already in South America. When Bitcoin came into Argentina, there was a big blurb about Bitcoin doing this, but they're running on the Algorand 
blockchain. The transactions are going through Algorand, not the Lightning Network, it's through on Algorand. There's a lot of institutional money that's gonna be played into Algorand and most people are looking at where's the wallets. It's not gonna be in the wallets, it's gonna be in the transactions because the transaction is how Algorand is making its money. And once you start getting billions of transactions because you have billions of people that have to use your transaction system because you are that layer, the money is going to be there because you are in the infrastructure of how people not work and they don't even know it. They just use you because that's what you're there to do. Most people don't understand this concept about how Algorand is positioning itself at this place and this place because they're used to looking at themselves and looking and measuring themselves on these metrics of how Solana boomed, how Cardano got this, how Ethereum boomed. Ethereum is a place where people and whales and, and uh, companies, because they were the first one of the layers that actually did this and they got the majority of the market. Just because that's happening don't mean that they're gonna be the number one. This is another thing what you have to understand. Algorand is operating like it's gonna be a multi-chain um, a universe. Not that it's going to be, there can be only one. This is not Highlander. There is going to be a multi-chain and what they're trying to do is set themselves up that they're going to be unmovable because that's what you do when you're in the infrastructure of countries. You're in the infrastructure and this is what I want you to pay attention to what Stacey is telling you how she's answering these questions. It's how Algorand has already set itself into the infrastructure of some of the very, um, um, uh, very um, institutions in uh, different countries that we need to understand that this is going to be great. Stacy, take from there. We know where we're at now. If you have it in a perfect world. It's hard to even ask about five years of crypto because yeah. it's probably dog years. Yeah. You know, Thirty-five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what would what would Algorand look like in five years? Well, it's not so much what Algorand would look like; it's what the world will look like. You know, the, of the one point seven billion people that don't have access to finance, a billion of those people have a mobile device of some kind. You know, that's the world I want to see, where those people can borrow money, they can establish identity. The the billions of people in this world that don't have identity. Blockchain broadly and Algorand specifically can help solve those problems. I, you know what I think five to 10 years out, the world I want to see is where people can have self-sovereign identity. They can marshal their identity when they need to. They can keep and reveal information as they choose. They have access to finance. They can use the data about themselves to get credit. They can, you know, in some countries in Africa, you need to know somebody before you can open a bank account, right? They can borrow, they can have micro insurance policies, they can invest assets at a micro level. That's the world that we want to see, right? And uh, Algorand is just, I think, you otherwise wouldn't be here. Obviously, I think it's a layer one that can deliver on that promise. I think that's an incredible vision. Are there any obstacles that you think could be, I think we generally surmount every obstacle, you know, problem in this space, but are there any that worry you that could be permanent or debilitating and, and things that could happen that could really stop any of this? No, I think it's a slow grind, right? And the more you, you know, the further down you get, you come, there's something else is kind of like a roadblock in the way. And you got to think about how you're going to get through that roadblock. That's innovation of, you know, the, the cycle of innovation, right? This is any kind of innovation, but people care about crypto. And the more people that know about it, the more people that understand about it, the more people that see their, uh, see its potential. We as a global community, I mean, we, you know, we trash talk a little bit each other, but we are all in it together. I mean, I love my layer one brethren. I really do. We are all in it together for the big, for the potential and the medium term, right? And the bigger we get, the more unstoppable we're going to be, right? It's nice to hear you say that because I don't think that every... Understand what this she says. That last thing is key. The bigger you get, the more unstoppable you become and this is one of the things that I, 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 I'm trying to get people to focus on when it comes to Algorand 
they're bigger than you think. We're not in the market cap right now. We're not, because a lot of this stuff that she's mentioning now, it's it's in the process of developing. A lot of things that you have to understand, the financial impact and the transaction, the maturity of this thing, it takes time because people have to see it work before they hop on. The, the South American project with Bitcoin, it's forgotten about by most investors, but it's not forgotten by people who want to replicate the system. Understand this, that even the banking institutions that are on Algorand, because they're banking institutions that Algorand are, is working with, not only in South America, not only in Nigeria, not only in America, not only in Italy, these things are not only um, pioneer our, our sparks uh, to the things to come. The people are looking to see if this thing that has never went down, never had this the security hack, they're looking to see if it can still hold up. And once it proves itself one year, two years, that it consistently does what it says, don't you understand how many people are going to come running to Algorand? Because it's proven. Right now, Algorand is not a proven commodity. This is what most people don't understand. It's in the, it's in the primary stage of being proved. Right now, everyone's seeing if it's going to be hacked, if there's going to be a problem in Argentina, if there's going to be a problem in these third world countries, if there's going to be a problem on a settlement layer, if there is no problem with Algorand in the next two to five years, it will establish itself as the layer one of the whole blockchain. Uh, because the thing about it is, it's the first one to be tested institutionally on a on a, a country size basis, on a brick cloth size basis, no other blockchain is being run on a countrywide level. It's not being done, and not only has Algorand done it in South America, they're about to run it in in Nigeria, places where guess what? For for lack of a better term, they're not they're not strong economies. But the fact is you can actually translate that because if you can work there, then I have proof of concept. And once I have proof of concept because it was tested on those people, on those systems that wasn't as great as ours, but we can see it working. I'm telling you, Algorand is right around the corner from being the base layer. Projects that you're excited to potentially work with in the future that you uh, haven't been in contact with or worked with yet. <laughs> yeah, you know, we think about sort of the crypto ecosystem broadly. So we have DeFi verticals, we're excited about gaming, we're excited about our creator economy. We have a very good creator economy because our transaction fees are so low, right? So, sort of NFTs, they can be small ticket prices. And for small ticket prices, you just can't pay a ton of gas fees, right? So, this is just growing in a kind of Cambrian explosion. You know, in the real world, I've mentioned a couple more and we've got, we're, but we're pretty excited about some partnerships coming up in, um, you're going to get me in trouble on Twitter, by the way, because, <laughs> because I'll say something to you and then I'll get, what is it? When is it starting? What are you know, but we have a, a couple of really interesting partnerships coming on uh, in disaster relief payments. Do you know that in disaster relief right now, they're, they, not all the time, but they can travel with like tens of thousands of dollars in prepaid debit cards on them. So they can hand out prepaid debit cards at these disasters. It's crazy, right? I know it's crazy. Your heart goes out to them, right? And so we are uh, working now with the two largest disaster relief organizations in the United States to put all of these payments on the Algorand blockchain, right? So that when you have a, you know, your, your living room is flooded, you take a picture of your living room, the money arrives. Right, and then the next agency can see ah they did get money from say FEMA Texas, but I can't give them. I don't need to give. So you 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 cut out the fraud. You make the payments more immediate. Everybody's happier. You're not traveling around with debit cards on your on your person. It's really so in disaster relief. Also in remittances, uh, we're working with a we're in we're in discussions with a a big um, 
another kind of relief organization, global relief organization, about doing um, local payments for them. Um, yeah, so we, yeah, we have some, you have to have me back again. It's incredible and because I have these conversations, obviously, with everyone across the industry, and we talk about metaverse, NFTs, yeah. DeFi, and yeah. then we talk about metaverse, yeah. NFTs, and yeah, DeFi. Yeah, yeah. Nobody that I've spoken to is talking about these very, very real world, very yeah. pressing and yeah. very immediate problems that you are seemingly solving. Yeah, super focused on it. We're super focused on it. And it's just going to get more and more and bigger and bigger. And I think part of the reason that I'm a good CEO for the Algorand Foundation and part of the reason that I was picked is that this is where I come from. You know, I, I have the experience in traditional finance. I have cared all of my life about financial inclusion. I have cared all of my life about access to capital. I believe in a private sector led growth model, right? So that, you know, savers should be in good, well-functioning financial markets, able to give their savings, not in a bank account where, you know, the inflation rate's 10% and they earn 2%. They're losing money by holding their, their income, right? But they should be able to put that into to work, to finance entrepreneurs who don't have any access to capital, right? Those entrepreneurs, get those savings and what do they do they grow they hire more people they pay them more then those employees have more savings you know it's a virtuous circle of private sector led growth that's how i think that's what i think the equation for prosperity is right blockchain can deliver on that and so we at at the algorand foundation and i personally am very very focused on making sure that we play our small part in making this world a better place for that engine for growth. And I think we can go. Now, I wanted you to hear that because I wanted you to understand use case. All these other chains, you go on other chains and everybody's NFTs, Metaverse, DeFi, all those things. Not that they're not a bad thing. That NFTs is a good way to bring on board people. People just want to see the, the you know, buy something that looks cool, that is in, it's a fad. You know, NFTs on a large case, no, it's not going to be worth no money. No, none of them are going to be worth money to the extent of people buying buying them for the same amounts of money. Unless there's a use case. Blockchain in itself is nothing unless there's a use for it. Algorand has understood this. Algorand has made itself where it's going to be useful. And that's the thing that I key in with everything I do. And I'm saying with Algorand right now. I want you to understand this. The video's going long. So let me run through some other things that I want to show you is that the Owl Team Group selects Circle to boost its border to B2B cross border payments okay i didn't show you this last time but i understand what's going on even here i'll pay will enable businesses to pay vendors with usdc regardless of the business or vendor locations these transactions can occur on different block chains including algorand avalanche ethereum flow hedera Polygon, Solana, Stellar, and Tron to help improve payment times and reduce costs. Alpay will provide the business and vendors with a secure wallet to exchange their fiat currency for USDC to easily send and receive payments. This is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you. Algorand is the base layer solution of transactions. You heard me when I went, or you can go back and look at my video on ISO 2222, which is a transaction concept that the, uh, that the, the, that the World Trade Organization, the IMF, and all those global things are changing from ISO 150. Uh, 22 because that's the way uh, the financial transactions are read is through that language algorand is there i'm telling you we have done a lot if you understand that what the algorand uh blockchain is up to and this last thing this last thing let me get this out and i'll be on i'll be going uh senior executive 
joined Blockchain Focus Foundation after two years stint at Re Revolut, Re Revolut, the fast growing uh, company that has over 100 million customers. Deidre Holligan, who until recently was the only woman serving on the executive team at a fast growing FinTech revolution, Revolut, has taken up a role with the Algorand Foundation, which is expanding in Dublin. Algorand have just onboarded John Woods, a couple of executives. They're growing their DeFi, the FinTech, they're growing the FutureFi. I'm telling you, I need you to be excited. I need you to understand. I need you to go to people who split, press, spread, spread and fun. I need you to go to people and let them know who lost hope because we're in this bear market. Everyone are, is down. Tell them that Algorand, Algorand will be the blockchain to give you something to smile about right now. This is an investor's mindset because what they're doing right now is showing you security. Because no matter what's going on, this blockchain technology won't go away. Somebody will eventually, if Algorand don't do what they're supposed to do, somebody's going to buy their concept. This is something that you have to trust in. Trust in the technology. Trust that this is actually the way people go forward. Because just like Tracy said, this is technology that's changing the world right now and the idea of getting people to move their their um, payments um michael saylor bitcoin maximus he is i like when he says bitcoin is energy but the fact is money is energy money is energy it's actually money is energy because it's time that you're paid for, the, the use of your energy, the use of your time, the use of your emotion, the use of your mind, all these are time elements. And money is an estimate, uh, is the payment for your, you putting your time into something. And the more valuable you become, the more valuable you understand your time and being able to use time and your energy, you're able to multiply your money because you start seeing what the reality of your life is. It's you're transferring energy to this payment system. So how are you now going to use your energy? Are you going to use your energy in a wasteful way? Are you going to be in a position now to make your bag grow. This is Sam Houston. We're in the divide. We're here hoping that your tomorrow is better than your today. And I'm out.